Welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review. Highlights, features, and analysis with head coach Connell Maynard. Brought to you by University Kia, Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, Huntsville Hospital, Redstone Federal Credit Union, Fellowship of Faith Church, and X Golf. Bulldog fans, welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review. Good evening and welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm Ted Dixie, your host. The Bulldogs had homecoming 2019 on the hill. Congratulations, coach, for giving us an overtime victory over Texas Southern. Yes, sir. Uh, no problem. You know, the, the main part is we got the W. It was 1-0 last week, and uh, that was the biggest thing. Uh, you know, we got a lead, and they came back and tied it up and uh, went overtime. And it was just proud of the guys for keep fighting, not giving up and pulling out the victory in overtime. You were telling your student athletes, coach, that they had to stay focused during the week. That turned out well for you. Yeah, yeah, you know, homecoming with all the hoop live, step shows, comedy shows, all kind of shows. Uh, you know, it's very, very hard to keep the guys focused and uh, we was able to stay focused and, and get the win. You know, we, we had them in, in good shape there, up two scores and, and driving and uh, turned the ball over and let them back in the game. Um, but, you know, the guys refocused and uh, finished the job. Coach, why can I hear you telling the folks that's okay, that's okay when we were tied at 28? Well, we, we, we kept shooting ourselves in the foot. You know, first half, we stopped our own drives with some penalties and, and, and doing some stuff we shouldn't have did. Uh, so we knew we could move the ball and score uh, when we just took care of business, did what we were supposed to do. Uh, defensively, we gave them a couple short fields and, uh, uh, and they made a couple big plays. So we knew if we got, got back to cutting those down, we could stop them on defense. So. We was, uh, we was feeling pretty good about it. You've had an 18-point come-from-behind victory. You win a game in overtime. You're building the character of your team, Coach. Yeah, you know, that's, that's part of it, you know. And if you look at it, we're right at the halfway point of the season. Uh, we're four and two through six games. We still got six games left. Um, so we're at the halfway point of the season, and I think we've built a lot of character. And, and uh, our guys have, have learned how to finish in these close games and, and pull out the ones that we didn't pull out last year. So I'm very pleased at this point. But we still got a lot of work to do. And, of course, we'll take a look at the first half highlights from homecoming 2019 against Texas Southern. This is the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. Don't get hit hard with low trade offers. University Kia proudly supports Alabama A&M University football. Check out our large selection of new Kias, including the new 2020 Kia Telluride. Ask for Arthur Seaton, managing partner. We want to see you in a Kia. Go Bulldogs! Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. A church with a big heart of love. Located at 315 Winchester Road in Huntsville, Alabama under the leadership of Dr. O. Wendell Davis. The worship services begin at 7.45 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. every Sunday. Now, we pray that you are blessed by our worship experience. Darrell brings new energy to the power plant. Julian's accounting is by the numbers. There's student interns from the College of Business and Public Affairs at Alabama A&M University where marketing class connects with the community and companies come to recruit. So while Kyle strengthens his managerial skills, he's earning a business degree and experience at Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. 98.9 WJAB-FM Huntsville. 100,000 watts, 24 hours a day. Smooth jazz and cool vocals. I'm just a prisoner of love. I get misty just holding your hand. 90.9 WJAB. From the campus of Alabama A&M University. Don't get hit hard with low trade offers. University Kia proudly supports Alabama A&M University football. Check out our large selection of new Kias, including the new 2020 Kia Telluride. Ask for Arthur Seaton, managing partner. We want to see you in a Kia. Go Bulldogs! Thank you for watching the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm Ted Dixie, your host. Coach Maynard, it's homecoming, but more importantly, it's another opportunity for you to go 1-0 during the week. You've got a tough opponent. You said Texas Southern was the best 0-4 team in the football championship subdivision. Yeah, I, I think everybody saw that too. You know, they, they got a good football team. They played us uh, nip and tuck, you know, 
they didn't give up, they didn't quit, they kept fighting, got it to overtime, and, uh, and you know, we, we scored overtime, put the pressure on, then defense rose up and made a play. Now they're the best 0-5 football team in FCS football. And they're going to beat somebody. And they're going to beat someone in an inopportune moment. Yes, sir. They're going to beat somebody. They're going to upset somebody and mess up somebody's season. And, of course, Coach, going into the ball game, the injury bug was alleviated a little bit. Brian Jenkins Jr. came back. That gave you another weapon on offense. Yes, it did. You know, we've been missing uh, Jenkins uh, the past three games. And uh, so he came back and um, helped get that receiving core back where it needed to be. He led us in receptions with seven. Uh, Kendra Johnson had six. I think and then uh, Xavier Moore had five, and then Abdul had four. And uh, th those are our big four. And uh, those guys had 22 of the 28 completions. So, you know, now we're coming out here. You see uh, we're running through the tunnel, bringing them out, and have the coin toss here. This was unusual. We rarely ever see a coin toss where the teams are already facing an end zone. Was that something new for the conference? I don't know why they did that. You know, maybe the referees was – Hi. <laughs> anyway, here's the first kickoff, Coach. Beautiful day in Lewis Cruz Stadium, but it's 92 degrees, and it's a little bit hotter than we would expect it to be this time of the year. Yeah, man, it was 92, man, uh, at 2 o'clock, you know, playing the hardest part of the day on, on homecoming. But, uh, you know, both teams had to play in it, so you got to be ready to play. And this is the opening drive. They, got it, they drove it down, and we got a fumble there. It's a big play. Uh, so we keep the momentum, and... Oquia goes to uh, Kendrick backside. It. First down right there. We tried to take a, uh, a shot down the field on the left side. It wasn't there, so he just checked it down on the backside. And one thing that's interesting of note, Coach, Southern, excuse me, Texas Southern had almost double the rushing yards. They wanted to take Jordan Bentley and Gary Quarles away, but then you let Akil Glass throw for 377 yards and four touchdowns. Right, and uh, Quarles had a 10-yard run right there, so we was able to run a little bit, and then we throw a quick screen out to uh, – Abdul there, and he make a guy miss and get the first down, and we come right back here, and uh, Aquil throw a laser that down the seam to uh, Kendrick Johnson, our tight end. I think we're already leading the FCS in tight end touchdowns, and we added another one yesterday. So uh, he's doing a great job, man. You try to take away them other guys, you still got to worry about Mr. Johnson. So uh, we got a lot of weapons on offense that we can get the ball to with Abraham and uh, Moore and uh, Jenkins. And so you still got to keep on, on Johnson because uh, he can hurt you just as fast as the other guys. Your and defense kept you around in this ball game as well, Coach. Yeah, defense is playing hard. Here's a screen right here, and, and they do a good job of bottling up Ooh. and got a big hit there by, I think, um, Price. Uh, and it's 10-7 10, 10 them right now. And here's a kick return by Quarles. We didn't do a very good job here blocking that guy. He split two guys. And we had a miscommunication. Uh, and now we come back with one eye screens of our own to Jenkins good. here. And so he gets about 20 yards there. It's a good play call. Get us out of the hole. And uh, here's uh, Bentley here with some more tough yards and, and dragging and pulling people. That's what he do, 13 yards, man. He's like 18-wheeler, man. Just hit him on the back and pull him. Bulldogs now are trailing 10-7 to 7 as you see the score. Texas Southern converted a field goal. And here's a great play right here by Ibrahim. Yeah, this is all him, man. He just made God miss, cut back on the safety and take it to the house, man. That's a, that's a great play. Good play by Quill, getting it out quick enough so he can get yak yards. And, and uh, Abraham there looking to score, man. He, he's not just happy to get five yards, he's looking to score. And so that's a great individual play by him. And it gives the lead. Um, and we, here's the replay of it. So you throw him a quick out route right here. Bam, make the corner miss. Cut back on the safety. He didn't want no parts of it. And then I run everybody else. Ibrahim has that smoke, the extra point, and the Bulldogs now go up 14-10. to 10. You get a collective sigh of relief in the stands. Coach, you remarked that in your tenure, your short tenure here, you're 1-4 and four at home. This had a, a bigger game than just a record implications. You wanted to get used to holding home field. Yeah, you know, we, I tell the guys, hey, man, you don't let nobody come to your house, knock on your door, and tell you come outside and fight in your yard and then beat you up. You know, so, <laughs> you know, we got to protect your house, man. You got to protect your home. Your home crowd, those guys come to support you. You know, we got to give better effort and we got to do a better job of winning the home. And hey, we got off to a good start uh, yesterday. Texas Southern, as you said, coach, they're a very good football team. They made your defense run from sideline to sideline. Of course, their quarterback always was able to pull that ball out the last minute till we get a bootleg off. Yeah, we was able to stop them and hold them to a field goal there. And it's 13 to 14 now. And 
it was a quick glass with a 13 yard run that took like 42 seconds. But uh, it was a good run by his part. Here's another little check down to Gardner. His, his first game back, we've been missing that guy. So he's going to make some plays for us down the stretch here. Uh, another sc screen to Jenkins. Ooh. Yeah, he almost broke that guy's ankle. And this is a – we got a penalty. See, if Gardner get that guy, we might score. If he get 26, but he went to get another guy, we got a penalty. And uh, he got 15 yards taken off of this great play by Jenkins. Great camera work right here by our crew. Good job by that team. Yeah, it was. And it's 14-13 at the half, Coach. You got them down, but it seems that Texas Southern can almost score and make it a tighter game or even take the lead again. So what are you thinking about when you go in for the half? Oh, yes, yeah, one play away. You know, it's a one-point game. You know, one play, uh, special teams, defense, offense, and they got the lead. You know, we had an opportunity right there before the half, but we got a 15-yard penalty that moved us back. And so that cost us an opportunity to kick a field goal. Well, we did attempt the field goal but missed. And so that wasn't on there. But uh, if we don't get the 15-yard penalty, we got a great chance to score a touchdown and a chip shot field goal. So mm. that penalty was costly. It cost us probably cost us at least three points. And uh, that's, that's those type of things you can't do that can cost you ball games and close ball games. You know, when people say, well, you know, you don't look at stuff and you don't analyze it that much when you win games. Mm. But those are the type of plays that you got to focus and show your team that could have cost you a game because uh, when you win, you kind of overlook stuff. But when you lose, you point out everything. So those are, th those are tight plays you got to point out even in wins. And then, of course, at the half, Coach Maynard and his staff are going to point out the mistakes and see if the Bulldogs correct them in the second half here on the Alabama A&M Football Review with Connell Maynard. Don't get hit hard with low trade offers. University Kia proudly supports Alabama A&M University football. Check out our large selection of new Kias, including the new 2020 Kia Telluride. Ask for Arthur Seaton, managing partner. We want to see you in a Kia. Go Bulldogs! Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. A church with a big heart of love. Located at 315 Winchester Road in Huntsville, Alabama. Under the leadership of Dr. O. Wendell Davis. The worship services begin at 7.45 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. every Sunday. Now, we pray that you are blessed by our worship experience. Parker is 29 and learning to communicate again. The students teaching him earn a degree with 100% job placement. But the real reward is changing a life. At Alabama A&M, it's a university where agencies actually go to recruit compassionate students who help themselves by helping others. Service is sovereignty at Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. 90.9 WJAB-FM Huntsville. 100,000 watts, 24 hours a day. Smooth jazz and cool vocals. And the home of Mellow Madness till midnight. You bring me joy. 90.9 WJAB. From the campus of Alabama A&M University. Don't get hit hard with low trade offers. University Kia proudly supports Alabama A&M University football. Check out our large selection of new Kias, including the new 2020 Kia Telluride. Ask for Arthur Seaton, managing partner. We want to see you in a Kia. Go Bulldogs! Again, we thank you for watching the Alabama A&M football review with head coach Kynell Maynard. I'm Ted Dixie, the person that gets to sit next to coach and listen to what coach tells us. Coach, you're coming into the half, you're leading 14 to 13, but it's homecoming. It's hot outside. We knew we had people that were falling out that weren't quite prepared for that heat, visitors from out of town. What did you do at the half to mitigate that heat? Well, we do what we normally do. You know, we get some, uh, make sure we get some uh, drinks, hydrate, rest, get off our feet in the locker room, uh, we get back in the air. You know, and then we try to stay in there. I try to stay in the locker room an extra two minutes. You know, mm. I noticed I saw those guys out about five or six minutes on the clock, and I, I didn't want to do that. I want to stay in the locker room an extra two or three minutes of that air and then come out the last three minutes uh, just because it was such a hot day. You know, we are not fortunate enough to have the missed fans on the sideline mm. and those type things. So um, I try to do every little thing I can uh, to make sure those guys stay hydrated, rested, and, and, and ready to go fresh for the second half. And coming out to the second half, the Bulldogs are going to get the football first, Coach. Any things that you're thinking about right now you can let us in on? Oh, well, we just got to do what we've been doing. You know, like I said, right before the half, 
that drive got stopped because of penalty, and we had two other drives stopped because of penalties. Um, so we knew we could move the ball if if we uh, just clean up those little mistakes, then we could take the ball down and score and uh, put the pressure back on those guys. And the defense was doing a great job to help them to two field goals. And so keeping those guys out of the end zone was key. Texas Southern is going to chase a point in the ball game. We'll see that later. Of course, we'd like to congratulate Miss Alabama A&M University 2019 and her court. It was homecoming. You expected the homecoming halftime activities to take longer than they did, Coach. I know it surprised me. We said we might have set a record for the shortest HBCU homecoming in history. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a 25-minute half. I think it was just regular 20 minutes, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Um, and I was kind of looking forward to it because – it was so hot to give us that extra five minutes, you know. But here we go. We come out, we get the ball, and here's a pass to Kendrick Johnson. He's dragging people, looking like Bentley Jr. here. And uh, now Quill throws a little quick screen out to Abraham, I meant Jenkins. And we get about four or five yards on that, but we're stretching the defense, making those guys run. And we got a reverse call right here uh, to Jenkins. Good Goodbye block. by Blink, yeah. by Bentley. Good block. And then uh, that gives us another first down and inside the 20 in the red zone. And uh, we give it to Bentley. He makes another good, tough run. Uh, just stiff on the guy right there, and he's out at the 9-yard line, 11-yard line they marked him at. And so then Kendrick uh, make a guy miss almost. And, uh, you know, we right there knocking on the door at the 3-yard line, and, uh, and Bentley does the rest on his own, man. He's just – he's Bentley. You know, he made a guy miss right there and just took it to the house. So uh, now we got the lead and about to turn it into an 8-point game. Uh, 21 to 13. So that we did exactly what we want to do out there: come out of half and, and take it down and score, put the pressure on these guys, and uh, that's what we did. And now we're looking for the defense to get us a three and out, and take it back down and score again, and try to try to create some separation. Um, so here, here's the defense here. Um, there's a running play and a, and a big play right there on first down, a five yard, six yard loss by Cushions, and now they're in third down or oh, fourth down. They punting. So we got the stop that we needed. Uh, here's a punt. Jenkins lay hits the ground. Don't really do too much. So we, we'll take that. We got the ball right there at the 27-yard line. And uh, we got the momentum here in the second half. So we'll see what we can do with this ball. <clears throat> and that was Quarles in the, in the running back. Here's a, we're going to take a shot down the field here. And uh, Xavier Moore makes a great catch and finish. Wow. Great catch. Turns the defender around and then walks into the end zone. I know we were marked on the air. We couldn't see if Zay made the catch or not. But right there, folks, that's confirmation. A great touchdown throw, better catch. And look at the run. shoulder pad. You know, the guy grabbed him. You know, he still made a play. That was a great, great uh, throw by Aquil, giving him opportunity when you got one-on-one. -on -one. And then Xavier Moore making the play. You know, we say that ball's in the air. It's yours. Go get it. And uh, that's what he did. He went and got it. You influenced everyone, Coach. Everyone followed to the left, and you throw back to the weak side. Yeah, we show him outside zone there to pull up the, uh, the backside corner and the safety to bite down on it. And then we got two post routes behind it there. So um, that's, a, that's a good football play and good execution. And we're, we're in control of the game right here. Yeah, I mean, it's middle of the third quarter, and we got two, two uh, score lead here. And uh, now we're looking for the defense to get another stop. And we get it. We get a turnover right there. Uh, it's a great play by Fletcher to get the interception. And we got the ball right back. And so now we're looking to go ahead and, and try to put these guys away and go up three scores. <clears throat> Fletcher paying like you want your free safety to play, Coach, deeper than the deepest person and then able to close on the football. Yeah, and then make those interceptions when you get a chance. You know, you never know when a big play going to come your way. See so many DBs and safety drop interceptions. Mm. And so it's so, so gratifying to see these guys finally make plays and hold on to the ball. So here's a throw across the middle on third and long to Brian Jenkins. Uh, it was a good read by Quill. A little late on it, but other than that, it was okay. And they stopped us, and uh, uh, we had a turnover there that you didn't see, and then they went down and scored. And so now it's back an eight-point game where we had a chance to extend to a 22-point game. Instead, we turned the ball over, and they scored, and now it's an eight-point game. And we almost throw another pick here, but uh, Xavier Moore kept his eyes on this ball and made a great catch to keep, keep the drive going. And Quill throws a little hitch right out here to Abraham and he uh, get the first down and move the chains and uh, we're in good shape and then we, they got stopped. We got stopped and now they got the ball back and <clears throat> we almost got another pick there. That's what I'm talking about right there. You know, you, these guys, you see it every week on TV where DBs have a chance to make big plays and don't. Okay, so we dropped that interception 
and then they go on to score and tie the ball game up. And so, you see, you never know when a big play going to come your way. You get that interception, they don't do that. You know, if you drop it, almost nine times out of ten when you drop interception, the offense go down to score. Mm. So, uh, it's now it's tied up here late. We got a player here with a sluggo, and uh, he just couldn't quite get a foot in, just barely out. Great play by Xavier <clears throat> Moore on the ball in the air. But the Bulldogs are trying to drive. Texas Southern's going to end up tying the ball game, Coach, and now we're in overtime. Yeah, now we're in overtime. We hit the ball first. And uh, we run Bentley. We got a five-yard penalty because the offensive tackle moved, so it moved us back to first and 15. And so now we got it back to second and 10, the second play. <clears throat> and uh, we get Great, a pass interference. A good one right. catch. We got a pass interference here on uh, Kendra Johnson. So we got first, first and 10 at the 16. Um, matter of fact, this is the third out. This is the touchdown play. Good slant route yeah. over there, Coach Ibrahim, with another touchdown catch. I think he has five on the season now. Yeah, yeah, he's playing big, man. But, you know, they play cover three right there, and, and when you do, we got we to gotta, uh, stick post on the back side of that uh, because a free safety can't get there. And so now all you got to do is beat the corner who's in cover three, got cover three leverage on the outside. Um, and uh, O'Quill made a great throw. And you see it again. The backside corner actually pressed. But he's in three. You see how he turned to the sideline, his butt to the sideline? So he's playing three. Um, and so we know we got that throw in the hole there in front of the safety with the cover three corner on his back. And the quill put it right where he had to be, and, and Abraham made the play. And so now the defense is out, and we need to stop. We get a stop. We win the game. This is first down. They run the ball, get two yards. So the defense is flying around. You can see they, they're fired up. <clears throat> Second down, they take a shot right there. And uh, – the quarterback, the running back looked like a little miscommunication that the receiver stopped and the quarterback threw it ahead. Here's third down. They wanted to get it in a makeable distance, and they did. Got it third and two or three, and they tried to run uh, the ball inside zone up the middle, and we stuffed them, and that's the ball game. Bulldogs quite happy winning homecoming. This senior group coach, is a, to my memory, has only won one homecoming game. This was huge for them. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's what we work so hard for, man, and, and just so gratifying to that these guys get to, to uh, finally win a homecoming. And uh, I'm just proud of my coaches and for their game plan and the way they prepare these guys and the guys for, for um, finishing and, and, and getting it taken care of. And, you know, a lot of times, most of your fans, one, one, of, the, one of the games they want you to win is homecoming because that's the one they come to every year. Mm -hmm. So we, we're glad to be able to win on homecoming, but uh, we want to win to keep our chances for the SWAC and the Celebration Bowl alive. Of course, Coach, you're pointing your way this week. The Bulldogs will travel to Grambling, Louisiana to take on Grambling State Tigers in a game that we've only won one time down in Grambling. What are your thoughts about that going down? Well, we've got to do the same thing we did this week. They, they never won homecoming before. So uh, Grambling is, is not – don't have the typical Grambling record right now. I think they're 1-4, and four, uh, but they're a much better team than 1-4. and four, And they just came off their first victory this week. So – uh, they're hungry. They still got a chance, and so they're going to be ready to play. we got to be ready to play. We look forward to the challenge. We'll talk more about that when we come back for our final segment on the Alabama a and Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. Don't get hit hard with low trade offers. University Kia proudly supports Alabama A&M University football. Check out our large selection of new Kias, including the new 2020 Kia Telluride. Ask for Arthur Seaton, managing partner. We want to see you in a Kia. Go Bulldogs! Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, a church with a big heart of love. Located at 315 Winchester Road in Huntsville, Alabama. Under the leadership of Dr. O. Wendell Davis. The worship services begin at 7.45 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. every Sunday. Now, we pray that you are blessed by our worship experience. Engineering and science usually look like this, but our students build race cars from the ground up, explore wind tunnels, particle accelerators, and crystal growth. Our studies in cybersecurity and rocket propulsion have tech companies like Google and SpaceX recruiting at Alabama A&M University with one of the highest percentages of women STEM graduates in the country. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. 90.9 WJAB FM Huntsville. 100,000 watts, 24 hours a day.
smooth jazz and cool vocals. Give your to me. Give my to you. 90.9 FM WJAB. For the campus of Alabama A&M University. Companies hunger for our food scientists. Here, a new generation manages our cities of tomorrow. The discovery of hardier plants, healthier animals, is growing at our research station. Alabama A&M University, where new designs and ideas are put to the test. Be a researcher in our labs, or a forestry fire dog in our fields. Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Don't get hit hard with low trade offers. University Kia proudly supports Alabama A&M University football. Check out our large selection of new Kias, including the new 2020 Kia Telluride. Ask for Arthur Seaton, managing partner. We want to see you in a Kia. Go Bulldogs! Good evening and thank you for watching the Alabama A&M football review with head coach Connell Maynard. The Bulldogs' next opportunity for a victory will be this Saturday afternoon, 2 o'clock p.m. is the kick down in Grambling, Louisiana, playing the Grambling State Tigers. That means the pregame show may be heard on 90.9 FM WJAB starting at 1.30 p.m. Coach, what are you thinking about it? Oh, it's going to be a tough game, man. Uh, coach Fowles done a great job since he's been at Grambling. Those guys are always ready. You can never look at their record, you know, because they play a tough out-of-conference schedule every year. And so they might start out 0-3 or 1-2 every year. And you can't look at that because they got a much better football team that they always play up in the non-conference. So, um, you know, they, they in that same boat this year at 1-4, but they got their first conference win last week. And so those guys are hungry to continue that. Coach Files will have them ready on offense, defense, and special teams. Uh, but we're going to be ready on offense defense and special teams also. We look forward to the challenge. It's going to be a great challenge for us, but we look forward to it. And of course, join us on Monday nights if you'd like to shake Coach's hand at X Golf 2500 Clinton Avenue in Huntsville, Alabama. Bulldog Talk with Coach Manor starts at 6 o'clock p.m., but Coach is usually there trying to get a few drives in about 5.30. Come in and shake his hand. Coach, you get the final word. Yeah. Uh, come on out to the show. And uh, we're going to give you a chance to ask one question and, uh, and give you a chance to compete against me in a long drive. Uh, but we appreciate your support all year long uh, for the show and at the football games. And uh, look forward to seeing you all the rest of the year. As always, we look forward to hearing you and seeing you on 90.9 FM WJAB. Grambling is the opponent. Kickoff is scheduled for 2 o'clock. That means the pregame show may be heard at 1.30 p.m. on 90.9 FM WJAB. Traveling mercies to all of you going back home. Services Sovereignty, thank you for watching. Good night.